Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I wanted to share with you a new art journal spread. It's been a while since my last one and I felt I owe it to you. You can actually thank Polly Stevens. Her latest comments gave me a push to work on this rather than anything else. So thank you Polly. I really needed this art journal session. I hope you all like it. I have no clue what the design was going to be. I just decided the theme to be nautical. So I selected these stamp sets, ESC03, ESC11, to get the vintage maritime vibe with maps and ships. And I also wanted the octopus of ESC12 to play as the deep sea monster that some sea tales may have. In addition, the stencil PS094 would be perfect to add a title to the spread, Sailing the Sea. Now that we have all the players of this game, let's get started. This is my art journal and you will see all the spreads that I've done so far. There are videos for all of them, so make sure to check the playlist that is showing right now on the screen. And now we are going to start with today's one. First, I'm going to use some chalk paint by Pepper Artsy, some infusions, golden sands, some water, just a spritzer, and then a piece of cloth. So I start, as you will see, with a little bit of paint and then some water because I wanted to give just a hint of paint to knock out uh, those letters. I added some infusions to add some color and I mix it very well with a brush. Then I used that sponge or piece of cloth to actually apply it onto my page. However, this mix was very watery, so it was not covering everything as I wanted. So then you will see that I go back to more paint and then just some water and I apply another layer and still it's not as deep as it's needed to basically cover all those images so you'll see that I'll go directly with the paint and this paint is kind of chalky finish so it's like a gesso so basically fresco paints if you have some of them you basically have a gesso that it's colored with the color of the paint this one it happens to be white or offset white and then just applying it with the fingers and with the cloth until I actually find the background to be as I want. I'm heat setting it between layers and I'm applying more paint as I need. And now I move on to infusions. And I'm applying here and there in the middle some water to make it react and then I'll apply it in other spots. My paint has made that my background is now non-porous, so it's become a non-porous surface. And that means that if I apply water, I will remove whatever I have applied first. But then at the corners, they have no paint at all, so the infusions will soak in. And because I applied paint only to the part that had letters and images, the edges of my pages will remain well untreated and therefore they are porous so you will see that they get more tinted with that infusions and that will create like a, vin a vignette look on my page. So I'm working on my surface, applying infusions here and there, adding some touches until I get the vintage vibe that I like. As you may know already, I love using infusions and if you don't know about them, then it's because you haven't seen any of my videos yet, <laughs> because I always use them. But basically infusions are a mix of dye powders and also walnut crystals, which they react with water. So basically you just need some water to dissolve them. And the thing is that they dissolve at different speeds so you can achieve very nice things. For instance, in my page, you will be able to see lots of dots, right, that are brownish. Those are the walnut crystals, which dissolve very little by little. Now I'm putting some infusions in my graph sheet and I'm spritzing with water because what I'm going to do is a stamp. So basically now my water infusions become an ink and the first impression is going to be very watery. But as I run out of water, it will be sharper, the image that I get. So I just keep on stamping here and there until I like my background. As you can see, my stamp set kind of doesn't stick, so I'll fix that later. And in the meantime, I'm going to heat set that first layer of infusions to make sure it doesn't move. And I'm applying some more infusions with that piece of cloth. So now I'm applying some Versamark ink on top of the acrylic block and now my stamp will stick very well. 
and I'm finishing with some more stamping. And I'm heat setting that too. So now I will really stamp on top of my surface the items and the things that I want to add to my spread. So I'm going to use Versafine Claire, which is an oil based ink and it's waterproof. And it dries very slowly. So because my surface is non porous, I'm going to heat set that until the ink is not shine anymore, which will mean that it's dry. Because otherwise it will smudge a lot. And I'm going to take another print in a piece of paper. This one is a smoothie. And then I'm going to carry on stamping and drying with the heat tool the different elements in my page. So I'm applying those lines for the maps, the scales basically. And then I'm just stamping with the hand and with the pressure of an acrylic block. And now I'm using the monster or the octopus <laughs> and I'm stamping it with the hand just because my surface is not very flat so I prefer to apply pressure very well on it and now I'm going to stamp the compass on top of the octopus and also on a piece of paper you will see because I'm going to add this on top it will look nice don't worry so now I'm stamping in the piece of paper the different elements because I'm going to color them and then paper piece them and stick them on my surface. So I'm just putting some infusions with water because I'm going to watercolor them very quickly. No need to add much detail. I'm just adding a second layer on some places that I want them darker, but that's it. I don't mind if I go beyond the lines because I'm going to cut all this. Just a darker yellow in some parts of that chart and on the compass and also on the lantern and then as well on some of those sails. And then I'm going to heat set that and cut everything apart. So basically I just cut the round circle for the compass and then I'm cutting the lantern and I'm forgetting about the handle just getting rid of it and then this is the trickiest part <laughs> so it, I took my time to actually cut every little detail there but if you find it too difficult just cut along and that's it sacrifice if you want uh, the different details that's fine no word, nobody will know that there was I don't know something there very detailed you just cut it and that's it and then I'm going to cut the ship as well just the base and some sails and I stamp it twice because the first impression or the first stamping was not very detailed so I wanted to make sure that I had a second choice there and I'm also going to cut three pieces there very tidy which will be the top sails and the second part of the ship which I think stamped better than the first one and I'm gonna use this one instead and now I'm going to edge everything with Distress Ink this also will cover all the white edges of each cut piece so I use it for two things to cover those white things and also to add that vintage look and even those tiny bits I'm adding some ink So now I'm going to stamp that ship and because the previous pages are very bulky I'm applying some acrylic block there to have a flat surface and then I'm going to stamp with the same ink the ship. I could have done as with the octopus and stamp by hand instead of with an acrylic block but I decided to use this technique, I don't know, <laughs> that's another option that you have. And instead of an acrylic block on the bottom you could also put some newspapers or something that makes the surface instead of completely flat that it's a bit soft or cushion you know so then you can basically stamp and make sure that all the lines are well stamped and now I'm trying it very very well make sure that it doesn't shine and therefore everything is dry so now I'm going to add some embellishments and I'm adding there a spinner in the center of the compass 
so then it spins and I'll put it there at some point and I'll start seeing how things look like with all the cutouts on top of them. And as you can see the layout for me is not very clear yet at the moment so I have some bits and pieces that I know where I want them to be placed but others I really don't know yet. So sailing the sea I decide that it goes there and I'm applying it with some Versafine clear so the same ink and that it's going to be my shadow for this title and I'm pouncing the dabber I'm not doing circular motion in this case I'm just pouncing it through because it's very juicy and I don't want it to smear and go underneath the stencil and I'm heat setting it very well then I'll clean my stencil and then I'll apply crunch paste on top but slightly offset so I get a shadow so I'm moving my paste over there making sure that it's fluffy and I move top and left my stencil so then I'll cast a shadow down and right and I'm putting that paste on top of the stencil and I'm making sure that everything is covered and then I clean the stencil and that ensures that I have an even surface and there is my title and I'm going to heat set that now I'm going to apply some color to my background and I'm going to use the matte glaze and infusions I'm mixing those two and then with that I'm creating my own translucent paint and I'm going to start painting my octopus this translucent paint lets you basically work layer after layer until you're satisfied with the amount of color that you get so it's very important that when you do this mix of infusions and glaze you add very little infusions you don't need that much mix it very very well so then you get the walnut dissolve and you get a uniform color and then you basically paint, paint everything it's always easy to add another layer but it's very difficult or impossible <laughs> to remove a paint that is too dark so just have that in mind and if you're not sure if your color is too dark or too soft just uh, paint first on a piece of paper, a scrap piece of paper to just test if the color is what you want it for, to do now I'm also painting the other images apart from the octopus although I'm going to cover them with paper I just wanted to see how they looked because maybe with the paper on top would look a bit fake so I just wanted to see how they were and I could have just do it this way and not adding any volume at all but I decided to actually go and stick everything on top the octopus however had so many tentacles and thing that <laughs> what eight basically no well you would find out that it doesn't have eight maybe one of the legs is behind him but it only has seven legs <laughs> this one and the thing is that um yeah it had so many legs that i decided that i didn't want to cut this one so that one stays as it is and then the letters i found them too plain so I found that they didn't stand out a lot so I decided to add some of that mixed glaze on the background to kind of be like an extra shadow for the letters so I'm just adding that there I'm not sure if that makes such a difference but well that's what I was trying to do with this step And you will see that at the end I will rub off some of it with a piece of cloth um, spread with water so you could skip you could skip this step if you wanted to but I decided to go for it and here's when I try to kind of um, clean and even up a little bit not sure if I achieved anything <laughs> so now it's time to attach everything stick it to the page with this stress collage medium this stress collage medium is a very sticky glue super fast drying so it's very helpful for things like this that you just put it stick it and then a few seconds later it's done you can't move it 
and it's on its place. So basically I'm just using this to put everything, even metal pieces, and they will stay really. So I was just attaching there the compass and the lantern and now I'm moving on to the ship and I'm giving some shape to those elements with my fingers just so they pop up a little bit and then when I apply the, the matte medium just apply it to the parts that are more outstanding because those will be the ones touching the paper so there is no point on me putting glue in the center because that will not touch the paper at all now I'm recovering the three little pieces that I cut for the sails and I'm going to attach them too. So the same, just a little bit of that matte medium will work fine. And make sure you keep the piece of foam or paper that it's inside the jar of the matte medium. I didn't have it. And now I face with a matte medium that is pretty dry. It actually helps to stick it even faster than before. But at the same time, I have the feeling that, well, it's pretty dry now. And if it continues like that, it will dry in its own bottle. Well, now there I'm just shaping that flag and cutting some pieces up to make sure that I only had sails and the flag. And again, I'm shaping everything with my fingers to pop it up a bit more. And as I did with the other pieces, I will just put the glue on the parts that are outstanding and will be touching the paper. The good part about this matte medium is that it's matte finish. So basically, if you have some of it outstanding from one side or something, you will not be able to distinguish it. So basically, it dries uh, transparent and matte, so it seems that, like it's not there and it shrinks, so basically if you apply more than normal, well, it will just shrink and disappear, kind of. I'm stamping another piece there. I could have actually um, added color to that anchor, but I decided not to. And then I'm adding two words from ESC3 about the tombs and the pages related. And then, well, I have that corner set up. And now I'm going to add some ink to the pages and I'm going to tear some parts of it. So the pages were very fragile, so it was very easy for me to actually curb some of those corners and also add some distress look on all the pages just by passing my nail. So I was passing my nails through everywhere and then with a the sponge dauber I was adding some ink and I was hoping for the paper to tear somewhere and where it did then I made that tear a bit more obvious so I repeat that on all the edges of both pages it would be nice that then you will see I will tint the background page so you will be able to see a darker shade outside that page so it will look nice you'll see so I'm just curving that corner with the brush but then with my hands and again I'm treating those um, pages very badly <laughs> with my nail so I distress them you had obviously um, distress tools to actually make this but because the pages are so soft I can do it just with my my hands with no effort at all <laughs> And once I'm happy with that, I was doing that wrinkle there, try to highlight it with ink. But I decided not to go for that anymore <laughs> because I could crack the page basically. So now I will be putting that over there. I did a fold and now what I'm going to do is adding some ink. So then it seems there is a shadow underneath. And that was going to be glued over there, as you see that I'm doing here. But then I thought that it would be too plain and I had an idea. So I basically ripped that off <laughs> before it actually glued. And then I got a piece of twine and started to fray it until I actually got two fibers. And those fibers 
will kind of be a nest for that title. Those titles are actually, if you see old maps, um, they have the title of the map and the area and the scale that was used for to create that map basically. So that one is from the Gulf of Benning, I think. And then, well, I just used it and then I put those fibers behind, but because the tone was very like my background, I decided to tint some with some chalk paint and well, this becomes a bit messy <laughs> and my fingers become super dirty with paint, but hey, this is mixed media. What did you expect? So after all that messy things, um, I finally put them in the back and I kind of let them decide to take the shape that they want. <laughs> so as I can, I just stick them to the back with some cell tape and then I really literally will leave them as they stay. So not putting much effort, it will look more natural. I'm just trying to make sure that they don't stand out a lot. So I'm putting some of those ends towards the inside. And well, they frame it very well. It's a subtle touch because basically you can see it, but not a lot. So, well, it looks nice. So now it's stick finally in place. And now we go to the other embellishments. And here, as I was saying, I'm just applying some on the metallic elements and I'm just placing it there. I'm not pushing hard, just letting it rest there with a thick layer of matte medium. It will be enough because then what well, it basically will stick. You don't need to push, just leave it there. It will dry there and it will dry hard. And now I start praying with other elements. And as you can see, I didn't have very clear in my mind what I wanted to do. So here's all the playing that I did, which was a lot. Stars over here, stars over there. They look very nice, but they will not be part of the actual um, design at the end. So I decided to add those other elements and I like it that way, but not with the stars. So stars will be out. I tried to put some mother of pearl buttons, but no. So then I decided that this, this will be the way. And what I'm going to do, I could have stick them, but basically because this has holes, I kind of prefer to sew them. So I'm using that thread to put those elements there. And by the way, if you are one of my Etsy customers, you would recognize some of these. Because when I basically put, um, I mean, people place an order in my Etsy shop, I kind of give them some goodies. And some of these are, well, the little elements for the C. So yeah, this is a way that you can use them in a spread like this. <laughs> and I also put some of this thread that I'm using as well, because they coordinate very well. And basically you can sew them and it seems that it's gold. And I like it very much. This is the thread that I always go to. So I'm sticking the back with some cell tape to make sure that it doesn't move. So with every element, once it's done, I stick some cell tape. So I will not put everything, all the stitching, just showing you how it ends up, basically. It's just a couple of stitches, nothing more. And if you don't want to do that, then you can always stick it directly with the matte medium. It will work as well. And now I'm adding a few more stitches just to hang that compass from the S of sailing. I wanted the compass to stay straight, but then kind of hung a bit on the side. If I had done it again, I may have actually make it more twisted, more turned. Like if it was, well, when you're in the sea, um, the sheep move a lot. So basically, well, you're moving all the time. So to give it a bit of a movement, I would have put it even more um, angled. <laughs> and you could have also leave it just hanging for a bit of movement. So like the compass that the spinner works, well, this compass could be hanging as well. I think that's all. And the only thing to be done now is adding final touches to the pages. So I'm going to add that ink 
on the back page so then the pages are more framed let's say and they have a sharper edge and I'm using the same ink all the time so then I make sure that all my colors coordinate basically and I'm keep on checking where the tears are because there I want to put even more dark or make sure that I don't lack any ink so I'm just coloring the second page as well and all I'll have to do left will be sticking those pages together I use here Mod Podge you could use any PVA glue for instance and by sticking those pages what I achieve is not only to hide all those threads and that from the stitching but also it gives me the, the more strength to those pages basically because these papers are very thin and then I'll do the same on the other side and I'm using a lot of glue but not on the edges the edges I want them to stay a bit up Just pressing a bit more to make sure that the glue stays there and nothing more to do. That's it. So that was all for today. As always, I will show you now some pictures from all the details on the spread. I really had fun creating this one. It was great finding just some time to play again with my art journal. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and write me a comment. I love to read them all and I'll respond as soon as I can. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can also click in the ring bell button so you don't miss any of the new videos coming. I'll add the link to the playlist where you can check my other art journals and I will also add a previous video that you may also like to check. So nothing else from me today. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!